You know, I've been so excited about this that even started building LLM from scratch. Hello dear, today we are diving into a topic that's hotter than a GPU running a complex query, AI in data engineering. I know we're all feeling a bit anxious about this. Some of you are probably wondering like, should I still pick a data engineering career or I'm in my mid or senior role, am I going to be replaced by some fancy AI? Let's not panic. Okay. It's not time to trade in your SQL skills for a crash course in AI resistance just yet. I've been keeping my eyes on the job boards and on what's really happening in the market, sprinkled with some of my personal observations from the industry. And as you know, in the world of tech, change is the only constant. So let's dive in. Remember the good old days of manually coding every data pipeline? Well, those days are numbered, my dear. AI is coming for our ETL jobs, but in a good way. AI really helps with data extraction itself. It would recognize different data formats and structures. Also, it's incredibly effective at discovering new data sources. Algorithms can crawl websites, APIs, and databases to automatically find relevant sources of data. Imagine this, you are sitting at your desk, sipping your coffee, then suddenly your AI assistant pipes up, like, hey, I found three new data sources that could be great for our marketing team. Want me to set up those? You nod and voila, the data starts flowing faster than you can say select start from coffee. Nice. With AI, we're pushing towards solutions that are no-code or even natural language driven. For example, tools like Airbyte are already making this a reality with their AI system. It lets you set up no-code integrations in as little as 10 minutes, and it takes a lot of the grunt work out of data transport. So writing extraction jobs in Airflow might become a legacy approach soon. Sorry, Airflow. Quality control on steroids. Let's talk about intelligent data observability, a term that covers data quality, lineage, and reliability. Why? Because raw data is rarely perfect. It often contains error, inconsistencies, and even missing values. How many times have you heard someone saying like, oh, only 10% of our data is high quality? 10%? That's a huge problem. That's like saying only 10% of my parachute works, but don't worry. <laughs> With AI, we're aiming for that 99 or 99% of high quality data. It can help improve accuracy and strike the right balance between too many false alarms, which we ignore, and not enough quality checks. For example, you could chat with an AI agent about setting up some SLOs for your critical tables. The AI would ask you about their business logic, key use cases, and then boom, it whips up a set of SLIs complete with a shiny data quality dashboard. All you need to do is get the team sign off and send it to the business stakeholders for approval. It also helps with data lineage, like nobody likes a black box, and detecting anomalies like unusual patterns and potential errors in your data. Streaming is a new black. Remember batch processing? We are moving towards a future where everything will be like near real time. We've evolved from the complex Lambda architecture, which unified both streaming and batch processing. It's powerful, but complex and often hard to maintain. Now we're moving to Kappa architecture. It's simpler because it's focused on streams. This means we get real-time data processing without the headache of managing two separate systems. And you can keep your knowledge graphs and vector database embeddings up to date in real time, which is especially useful for LLMs. And this way your models are always working with the most current and accurate data. The dynamic do. The graph databases answer the question, what is the relationship between the two things? Like, is Sam Altman connected to OpenAI? And on the flip side, we have vector databases. They answer the question, like, are these things similar? For instance, how is Sam Altman similar to Dario Amade? These two types of databases are powering RAG. This concept helps LLMs provide more accurate and relevant responses by grounding them into up-to-date context. Here's how it works. When you input a prompt, it gets embedded into a vector Vector. Then, using similarity searches like key nearest neighbors, the system finds the most relevant content. This process enables LLMs to produce high-quality outputs based on what's most similar to your prompt. Graph and vector databases are really useful for handling complex data types like images, documents, or even knowledge graphs. And the grand finale, the six 
industrial revolution. Hold on to your hard drives because the sixth industrial revolution is coming and is bringing quantum computing, graphene, and AI. I'm being tech optimist here and quite futuristic. Quantum computing offers crazy computational power, helping us to process massive data sets at unimaginable speed. With its completely different approach to computing, like instead of bytes, it relies on atom superposition, it can break current encryption methods easily. So all the banking systems, your government offices, etc., can be in danger. Quantum computers could potentially crack widely used public key cryptography systems like RSA and elliptic curve. How? Using Shor's algorithm, they might factor large numbers exponentially faster than classic computers. But the good news, there will be new ways to encrypt and distribute the data, like quantum key distribution. And guess what? We'll need new approach to handle data pipelines, real-time processing, and get deeper insight into the patterns. Quantum algorithms could optimize everything from machine learning models to encryption protocols, like it's gonna literally reshape everything. Graphene. Graphene will revolutionize our hardware with its crazy conductivity and strength. As a key material in future semiconductors and storage devices, it will enable faster data transmission, larger storage capacities, and more energy-efficient hardware systems. For data engineers, this means clever bottlenecks in processing and storing the vast amounts of data. And of course, improve scalability. What about AI? Well, AI will tie it all together. AI-powered systems will not only handle the growing complexity of data pipelines, but also enable like self-optimized data architectures. In this new era, AI models will be continuously updated with the most current data, now thanks to real-time processing powered by quantum computing and graphene-enhanced hardware. In conclusion, that's how AI can transfer data engineering. So, my dear, buckle up and enjoy the ride. The future of data engineering is near, like singularity. Like and subscribe, and remember, in the world of data, change is the only constant.